Hey guys, so um, today I'm gonna switch out my wheels on my seven Sola single speed. I've been riding six days in a row with this setup. I've really liked it, it's, it's been great. The Terravel tires with that rim packed in there, even though they're a, a, a um, thinner sidewall tire and, and not as durable, um, it just, it has a really good feel with that rim packed and, and I'm not dinging my rims, so it's kind of nice. So that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today is, is dinging rims. As you can see, I've got all my rims here. You can see the big ding in this one. Um, these are really soft. So let me start with the first one, the Stan's Crest. Stan's Crest, actually I used on my gravel bike. I don't think I would go anything this narrow on a mountain bike unless I was just building up some type of skinny tire cross country race bike. And it was really just about the climb. It wasn't for, it wasn't, uh, it was about racing, not really about enjoying myself because the, the narrow profile on this is going to make for a not as stable mountain bike and not as stable ride. So I got rid of those off my gravel bike. Actually, I never used them on a mountain bike and I got something wider. Um, the, the blunt, the actually, these are by Velocity wheels. These are great rims. They're very soft, they're really nice. And then you can see where I kind of dimpled it right there. I probably could have got some more use and maybe bent it out back out. And I'm, I'm keeping them if I have to reuse them. Um, but for mountain biking, they just seemed a little too soft. And um, I have actually, I have these, the Blunt SS on my gravel bike, but these are um, nice rims and they're on the, uh, they're not too heavy and, and it's wide enough for mountain biking. It's 30 millimeter wide and you're looking at the internal width. Okay. The external width doesn't mean shit. You want to measure the internal and 30 millimeter wide still gives a nice profile to a 2.4, 2.5 mountain bike tire. Now WTB, I really like these. They're, they're kind of heavy. It's got a 35 millimeter internal width but I banged them up. I got a flat spot on them. So they just, they're the ASIM um, 35. And it's actually this, this is a WTB on here right now um, with, but it's not ASIM, but it's just a regular, um, but it's 35 millimeter and that's their newer WTB. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but if you look up the WTBs, they change their stuff a lot. They've been around for a long time. Great company. I have a WTB saddle. Um, but this was on the heavier side. If you notice, this is not eyeletted. This one's eyeletted. These are these eyeletted means the, the little, the little eyelets for the, for the nipples to go in. So um, it's it's a heavy rim. It was nice while it lasted, but I banged it up because I wasn't using rim pack at the time and flat spotted it. And and once you flat spot, I mean, if you bang it to the side, you can true it back into place. But flat spottings are really hard to, to get rid of. Um. Here's another nice, very similar to the one I have. And I actually have another set of these and they're really good. The race face arch rim. And this is the arch offset 35. Again, a nice 35 millimeter width. And it's, it was a nice rim, but I wasn't using the rim packed and I flat spotted this one too. Cause I run low tire pressure you guys. And I, cause that tight lower tire pressure is essential for my single speed being fully rigid. And I need that compliance, if you will, in, in, in my tires to kind of add that cushion and, and suspension feel. And then here's the other DT Swiss. And, the, and this is what I really want to talk about was DT Swiss. DT Swiss rims, they're, they're more expensive, but this rim has been on since my old single speed, my um, nine or sir nine. If you look at back on those old videos, one of my first wider is better was with these. These are, these are 30 millimeter internal width. Um, there are 481 rims. That's the namesake. And, uh, they're really, really nice, solid. I don't know what DT Swiss did to make them so strong for being, I think it's the structural design, but for being so light there, there have been the strongest rims I've had as far as, uh, durability. And I still haven't, I haven't flat spotted them. I've, I've got a little, a few dings on them, but that's what I'm going to switch back to today. And that's why I have this wheel set. So to make it easier to kind of 
go back and forth with um, different ride characteristics for my seven. I like to switch the whole wheel set. That way I'm gonna get a different tire set. I'm gonna go with the Honcho in front. Um, this one had the Coronado in front, which is a really wide tire, but it, the knobs are not as aggressive. Honcho is a little bit more aggressive. So actually I'm going with Honcho front um, and back, and this is the Honcho and back. But this Honcho is the Honcho Durable. And so since I'm not gonna, since I don't have rim packed in here, I'm gonna go with the durable one to add a little more durability and, and hopefully not ding this rim. And um, that durable and a 2.4, just because the 2.4 I think is a perfect size for uh, a 29er insert or a 30 millimeter um, width insert of a, or rim width. I, I think the 2.4 range is probably right on the money where I want to go with that, where you still have a rim wide enough for sidewall support and it's not too narrow. So there you go, guys. Um, can't wait to get up there. It's a perfect day. It's like 60 degrees, so it's on the cooler side, but actually that's a perfect temp for mountain biking, in my opinion. And I hope I see you on the trails or comment in the blog or in the vlog and tell me if you like and anything else you want to hear on my channel. And I appreciate you watching. Subscribe, please.